All right, welcome to The Real Build. I'm your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I have a guest coming from Oxford, Michigan. He quit his corporate job as an engineer to get away from the cubicle and 40 hour weeks to become his own boss. Before figuring out what he wanted to do, he turned to personal development by listening and reading multiple books and joining Arte, a group that I'm a part of also. That's where we met each other. He had to sell everything, give up a lot of the finer things in life. He had to start over and found a home he turned into a duplex, which is where his journey began. He also is a car fanatic. Uh, and amongst a, a bunch of other things, but I'm happy to have him on because this is a huge topic. Teal Bogdan, welcome to the show. How you doing? Thanks, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. Super pumped for the opportunity to be on. I... Yeah, I'm, I've been I've been looking forward to having you on, man. I've been wanting to talk about this topic big time because obviously it's a major topic of discussion over the last quite a few years. On top of uh, especially now, things are changing pretty drastically among us with coronavirus and the real estate market so i'm looking forward to diving into this deeper with you and kind of teaching people what to look for in the in the real estate world as far as fix it fixer uppers and flipping and rentals and so on so and you're the guy that i mean you've talked in the past about this multiple times and you know a lot a lot more than anybody I've, a lot of the other people i've talked appreciate to appreciate it <laughs> appreciate it. i don't know how much i know but <laughs> do pretty good at it so <laughs> i want to get started about yeah, i always start with your background let's talk about uh who is teal bogdan yeah so i mean i guess just to kind of start off with i i immigrated here when i was 10 years old uh, moved here with my parents literally could speak zero english if you can believe that um, my first words was going to school first day was bathroom and then <laughs> kind of built from there. Um, so then pretty much just went through school, went through, I got a really good, uh, education of what hard work is, you know, seeing my parents go from pretty much nothing. We came here with like, I think it was two or three suitcases and like 3000 bucks. Right. And they were able to just bust their ass and, you know, get to, you know, essentially like middle class just by working hard and being good with money and all that. So I had a good uh, upbringing and I got instilled a lot of, uh, you know, how good it is to work hard and be good with your money and, you know, things like that. And then from there, you know, I went to college, uh, got an engineering degree um, through college. I was flipping cars, flipping whatever I could flip, right? Motorcycles, four wheelers whatever I could get my hands on. I was modifying cars. That was like my thing in high school and college was I want to have like a custom car shop, but you know, typical parents, they're like, Oh, you can't make money in that. You got to go to college, you know? So I went to college, got my degree and then pretty much just got a job. And then that's pretty much after that happened. I was like, well, is this it? This is, this is all I got. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I it, yeah, I mean that's right there. I mean, and similar to me, man, some like similar things growing up. I was always figuring out how to make money and stuff like that. And then you know, as far as selling stuff, anywhere from I don't even you know golf balls to uh, uh, I mean, when I was a kid, like trading cards, sports cards, stuff like that. I was just always figuring out a way. But I mean, I went to college too. Uh, kind of went went that route. I mean, my I came from a fam. My dad never went to college. He was kind of opposite. My mom was like, "You need to go to college." My dad was like, eh, "College didn't get me anywhere." And look where I'm at. And my dad had a lot of success without college too. But I ended up doing it and finishing. And to be honest, I mean, how much do I really use out of college? Nobody again. No, nothing against people with a college education. I, I have a marketing degree and a business degree. There's stuff I took from that, but there's stuff that I probably will never use the rest of my life, <laughs> you know, that the system made me classes that yeah. they made you take and pay for. You know, we can go yeah. on and on about that too. Um I but, mean just by those books that right there behind you, you know, that's probably your PhD right there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I mean, I learned more off of those than, than, than audiobooks, too. I mean, just I've learned more just by upping my reading and stuff like that than I did probably within the 
four or five, I was there five years, but five years I was there, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I don't take anything, you know, college, I learned a lot. I, I also learned a lot about partying too. And, and <laughs> to be honest, you know, and be, be oh, yeah. upfront with everybody out there. And, but it, it's something that did I need it? No, for what I'm doing right now. I, I admit to it. I don't, I didn't need it, but did it help in some kind of ways? Yeah. But was there a lot of stuff that I believe was a waste of time? Yes. hundred percent. And I'm sure you feel mm-hmm. the same about it. Oh so. yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so, uh, you obviously, you know, going back into your story to, uh, moving here and getting an engineering degree and so on, you know, what, what made you change? Uh, let's go from there. So you were in your, your, you got your engineering degree, you graduated with that. What happened after that? All right. So after that, I pretty much got a job as a design engineer. Um, okay. It was a decent job. It was pretty much just you sat in front of a desk or at a desk in a cubicle. And then every now and then you got to go to the plant or something, right? I was designing like powertrain cooling components for heavy duty trucks. So cool job. But I was just sitting there one day and I was like, is this it? Like I looked around, like I saw my managers like, okay, and I got 30, 40 more years of this and these guys don't look happy. They're not driving cool cars. They're not living in cool houses. Just, I mean, not, not even the material stuff, but they just didn't seem happy. Right. They seemed Mm -hmm. under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of working crazy hours, not being with their families, you know, all that stuff. And to me, I was just like, you know, it, it just doesn't sound like what I wanted to do, you know? And, uh, from there, I think I started just reading everything because I didn't know what business to go into, what anything to kind of what path to take to get out of having to be there for that many years, you know. Um, so that's when I just started reading and listening to audio audio books and just died doing like a deep dive. And uh, I kind of came across real estate. I never really thought about real estate when I was younger. My dad actually built houses and I worked with him on houses and it was just like, man you know I was always bummed because like all my friends were out hanging out I'm out there you know holding the piece of wood for my dad or you know whatever it was Mm -hmm. and uh now to come come find out that's helped me a lot with what I'm doing now um because I know how things come together but anyway so first job started doing a bunch of research stumbled across real estate pretty much just reading books and I was like all the wealthiest people own real estate so let's do real estate, right? I didn't know any of the, all the other bonuses and good things about real estate, you know? So I kind of started, you know, buying rentals slowly. And uh, I, that one job, I just couldn't stand it anymore. So then I switched jobs and became a calibration engineer. Um, so that was kind of fun. I was on the powertrain side. I was ripping around side by sides. Um, so it was a fun job, but it was still a job mm-hmm. and I still wasn't making the money I wanted to make right and then finally I was in a car accident and getting called away in that ambulance from the car accident I was like looking back at like the total car I was like man like what if I would have died like I would have died an unhappy engineer (laughs) right so that's kind of like when it clicked and I was like I just decided to like speed up my Cause I was waiting to have like X amount of rentals, this much cash flow to be able to like leave the job to be safe. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when that happened, I was like, all right, I got to just get rid of like all this stupid stuff that I spend money on and just focus a hundred percent on the one thing I want to do. And I'm 110% more happy now, you know? So that's yeah. kind of uh, <laughs> the journey to real estate. <laughs> Well, that's, a, I mean, that's the thing too, is like you being an, an engineer is an impressive career. It's a hard degree to have. Everybody knows that too. It's a hard thing to accomplish and to be an engineer, you know, when people think engineer, you think money and for you to step away, you know, or cons- not, cons- you know, but good money, you can make good money as an engineer. That's why a lot of people, and it's a hard degree to get. And you know, for you to step away from that and go into the real estate field and just completely say I'm done you know and then like as in the intro I talked about you as well you know just kind of giving up on everything because obviously I looked in your background you giving up on everything and having to cut ties with a lot of stuff that you were familiar with and not and kind of hold back and from buying everything you know 
buying everything. And I think in one of your videos I watched, you said hold back from buying everything on Amazon. You know, everybody, I don't blame you. I got that problem too. But, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it's, it's a cool story because I mean, there's a lot of people would be scared to do it. And that's the biggest thing is coming from you coming from a, a stable career that you're making good money, you know, and then saying, you know what, screw it. I'm going to just, I'm going to do what my passion is. And that's real estate. Cause I know I can make a lot more. Not a lot of people would make that decision. So, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It was, it was scary. And I think everyone around me, I probably had a few, uh, a few people that were like, yeah, go for it. It'll be, it'll be good. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but everyone else, right. Family, mm -hmm. friends, they're like, why would you leave six figures mm -hmm. to pretty much just start from zero? Like you spent, I spent five years in college, right. Cause I worked full time during college. Um, you know, you pretty much just wasted all that time. And I'm like, not really, like I'd still learn stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got my first rental when I bought it, everyone told me not to do it. Right. It's going to get trashed. Your tenants are going to be terrible. No one's going to pay rent. Just, you know, everyone's shit show of what's going to happen when you get a rental, you're going to have to fix toilets. I mm -hmm. I've had rentals for like seven or eight years now. I don't think I've ever had to fix one toilet right at 3 AM or any toilets at all for that matter. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it was definitely scary. And it, I think it took me, I, I should have probably made that step the first career instead of going to like the second career, like the second company, I should have just quit there and just cut my ties. But everyone was like, no, you can't do it. You know, like yeah. mostly my, my mom and stuff, you know, just, you know, you'll be happy. You got a good career, <laughs> you know, health insurance, 401k, you know, all that stuff. And, I mean, it's not bad, right? For some people, if that's what you can, you know, live your lifestyle with, that's perfectly fine. But for me, I just wasn't, it came down to being fulfilled, right? I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't challenged. I wasn't, I just wasn't happy, you know? So it's, you can make millions of dollars, but if you're not happy, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's the true thing is, I mean, there's probably 90% or even if not more people that aren't happy with their jobs and they go every day like a robot and do the same thing and sit at their desk and wish they were doing something else and sit on social media and see these other people that are doing what they want to do. And then they just, uh, I wish I can do that, but they're scared. They're afraid to leave. They're afraid to stop what they're doing. You know, I have friends that are like that too, that have talked to me that they're like, I want to, you know, I've considered getting my real estate license and getting in the real estate. And then I, I tell them, all right, well, when you get it, what are you going to do? What's your first move? Because, well, I don't know. Well, see, the money doesn't just come to you. You know, you have to work and put in the work for the money. And, and there's not a lot of people that understand that too in this business, but yeah. And then there's some people I deal with too, back to what you're saying is that they'll say, I'm going to get the license. Okay, go get it. And I can help you as much as I can. I'm your friend. I'll help you to an extent and tell you what I did. I mean, it took me eight years to get to where I am in this business. And I'm still, you know, trying to get further and further in it too. You know, it's mm -hmm. not going to be a snap of a finger. You, you're going to have to put in the work every weekend, every day during the week. It's nonstop. And, you know, people, my friends see that too. They're one, coming to the beach. I'm working, you know, and you probably get the same thing. Oh, uh, you're always working, man. You're always working. So, yep. <laughs> but when, see, the other thing is when you're doing something you like, it, it's not even work, mm -hmm. right? When someone asks me, like, what I'm doing, or when we're going to look at apartments or houses or whatever we're doing, um, it, I just tell people I'm, like, hanging out, right? Yeah. It, it's not work. It's I enjoy it. I'm hanging out with people I want to be with, looking at stuff I want to look at. So mm -hmm. it's you know, I don't even consider it work now. Like what I do, I don't drag, you know, dread Mondays. <laughs> no, no. And that's, I mean, that's the thing people might say it's a cliche answer. And well, yeah, sure. It's not work now, but it really isn't. I mean, you love what you're doing and you get used to, you get used to doing what you love too. Mm -hmm. You kind of build on that and you expect more. So everything that you can, it's weird to say, you probably understand this, but people that are listening may not, but you know, with the building business, I've been involved in building for a while since I was, you know, I grew up in this business, but mm -hmm. the more I keep doing and the more involved I keep getting in it, I want to do more and I want to keep 
you know, what's the next house I can do or what's the next model I can do or what's the custom next custom home I can have an influence on this customer, what that they're going to be like at the end. Like, Oh my God, you did this. You know, who can I, who can I hire a partner with that's going to make this thing stand out from everybody else. So it's always that next level. You know what I mean? So plus it's like you went back, you were talking about 40 hours, right? If I would work an hour over 40 hours at my last job, I'd be pissed, right? Mm-hmm. I'd be mad, like, because I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Now, I literally, I probably work, like, realistically all day, like, mm-hmm. work, right? But it doesn't feel like work. It's what I like to do. So, it's it's not work, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, it's I, it's same here, man. Like, I'm, I'm working throughout the whole night. Well, say I'm working, but you know, when I'm editing and doing stuff too at night or thinking about what I can do as far as video wise or whatever, it's all work, you know, it's all to further my business. But to me, it's not work. It's me, you know, it's like you just said, it's just in my mind, I'm like, I'm just doing it. And my girlfriend, she's just like, you work nonstop. I'm like, Am I? No, I'm just kind of, I got to edit. I got to do this. I got to have this done by this. I, you know, you get in that groove too. It's like, so um let's continue what what year did you what year was the year you chose to get into real estate and then what was your obviously we kind of brushed on this but what was the ultimate reason um so i think the year it was like 14 2014 or 13 okay. i don't even remember um uh, but somewhere around there and like i said i pretty much picked it just because it looked like from all the books I've read, all the business books, everyone that was super successful was in real estate, Mm -hmm. right? Some sort of like income producing asset. Um, And I was granted really ignorant to what all that meant. I didn't know all the awesome tax, you know, implications you could, all the tax benefits that you could get from having rentals and apartments and like all this other stuff. Right. Um, But it just seemed like a good idea. And then I got my first rental and i bought it and i rented it out like a week later and i think the mortgage was like 1200 or 1300 or whatever and Mm -hmm. i was getting 1800 a month and then like as soon as that hit i was driving away from the house i was like i need like 10 more of these this is like (laughs) the best thing ever like why didn't anyone tell me about this this is great you know Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like where the like real obsession just like hit you know and i was like all right find more houses, find more houses, find more houses. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I mean, that's, that, that's the thing too, is not a lot of people think the way you do and, and they, they, they'll make excuses towards it, but there's a lot of people that are renting that you're kind of like, all right, you're renting from a guy that's making money off of you, obviously. So why wouldn't you just get the mortgage or get a duplex like you did, you know, split it in half, have somebody rent one side, pays off your mortgage, everything, and you're making a little bit on top for some other finances and then do it again, then again, then again. A lot of people don't think of this or a lot of people are afraid to do it like we talked about too. And it's just, it's common sense. I mean, it's almost like, you know, but not a lot of people obviously have the ability to do it and take out the loans and stuff. And we'll brush on that in different ways. But, um, how so let's go on to the next one how does somebody get into what you're doing what's the best strategies or best ways they can get into it if they're thinking Um, about starting out so i guess my answer for this is completely different now that i've been doing it you know yeah um i would say you can get started doing you can do the wholesaling thing like what all the whole gurus tell you and it depends what your end goal is right Um, what I did personally was I had a decent paying job. So I was able to save up money for down payments on these houses. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how I got the ball rolling. Um, but what I, from what I know now, you can raise money from private individuals to help you buy those houses. You obviously give them a cut and you get a cut for putting it all together and, you know, they get a nice return and you own the asset. Right. So, um, I guess the best way to get started is it depends like where, where you start from, right. And mm-hmm. what your goal is. Um, but that's kind of what I did to get started. So as far as let's hit on different, like, so if somebody's let's say has no money, they're obviously going to part and look for an investor. How would they go about doing that? Yeah. Finding so they money? can either 
what I always tell people, they're like, Hey, I got no money and I want to, you know, get started investing in real estate. So I'm like, all right, bring me an awesome deal, find an awesome deal and we'll partner on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll bring all the money. I'll bring all everything I know and we can be 50, 50 partners or whatever. Right. Depending on a deal. And, you know, you get to have your first place and, you know, go from there or just find a lot of people do this. They just find deals for other people. Right. Mm -hmm um for other investors it's wholesaling right so they get a place under contract and then assign that contract to someone else and that's how we buy a majority of the houses that we flip gotcha okay and then if somebody let's say had money you know some debt money to put down what would be the best route to go like you started out with the money so you know did you what kind of loan would somebody look for or what kind of if they needed a little bit if so basically if they had the money to put down because obviously most loans majority of it you gotta have there's no no like money down, yeah. 20 down or whatever yeah 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 so what i started doing i, I started buying single family houses and yeah, having them as rentals um what i if i knew what i knew if i knew back then what i know now i would have went straight to apartments right yeah. you can scale much faster and just your units go up your maintenance is your management everything goes down Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of depends on what your goal is. If you want to just, you know, buy a rental and you manage it or, you know, give it to someone else to manage, you can do that. You know, you can just get a conventional mortgage. You put 25% down, you buy the place, you know, fix it up if it needs to, or just rent it turnkey sometimes. Um, so that's like one way of doing it. Another way of doing it. If you have a chunk of money, you can give it to someone that's already doing it and you can just partner with them mm -hmm. on it. Um, so that's another option. Um, it kind of just depends on how much money you have. Cause you know, if you have 20, 25% of a million dollars, you can go and buy yourself like a few, a multi-unit, you know, property mm -hmm. and get your feet wet that way. Or you can invest it into like a syndication. Um, so there's, that's the cool thing about real estate. It's literally limitless. It just all depends on what your personal goals are and what route you want to kind of take, you know? Yeah. And for the first time or two, I mean, for them to get started, what would you, obviously they're not going to have phone access to you to be like, Hey, Tio, uh, how do, how do I go about this? How do I go about that? What would you recommend them, you know, go to, or who should they go to? Uh, obviously it's, you know, what, let's say, uh, you know, if they're new they're they don't know their market, they don't know who the investors are in the area. They want to get started. They got a little bit of money. Um, or they don't have any money at all and they want to chase deals. How do they find that person? Um, honestly, the best way. So I have a meetup. Um, we have it every month. Mm -hmm. um, go to meetups, you know, go to meetups and a lot of investors go to those. There's a lot of Facebook groups for like in my market, there's, I think like four or five real estate investor groups all for Michigan. Right. So I'm part of every single one of those and I'm active and I'm, you know, seeing who's posting and doing all that. Um, I think the most important thing to do is to have a certain amount of education. So that way, when you do have a conversation with someone, you don't sound like you dumb. literally figured out that you want to, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say dumb, but like, you know, just having a certain amount of knowledge, not that you like figure this out, like, two hours ago, like, Hey, I'm going to be a real estate investor. And then you like rolled up to this like RIA meeting and you're just asking all sorts of like ridiculous things, which is fine. Right. Like I, I dig the hustle, you know, but, um, I think like what I did, I, I sat at my desk and did a lot of design work. Right. So instead of listening to music or whatever to back, you know, get the background noise out, I listened to bigger pockets. I had like a notebook, probably like this mm -hmm. size, and I went through every single podcast and I sat there and every single podcast I had to write, my goal was to write a page of notes. Mm -hmm. So I sat there, listened to these podcasts and wrote notes because every single one of those guys did something different and I could learn a little bit of something for every single guy, you know? So that's kind of how, what my like college was on like real estate was like bigger pockets and every single real estate book I could get my hands on. Yeah. And see right there, power of podcasts, power of books, stuff like that. I mean, oh, yeah. you can, you can literally self-educate yourself without having to pay some finance or, you know, some ad on Instagram that you say, Oh, I want to wholesale properties. 
click on my ad today and then it's a, t- a funnel that takes you to you know, his 997 special of here's yep. my all my books and stuff like that and you're going to become a millionaire in two days no i mean it's just it's what you said it's going to take time you took the time you listened to those episodes you took the notes reviewed your notes it's like anything with education because everybody today and uh, they want self you know the instant gratification which isn't isn't going to happen like i said i've been doing real estate for eight years i'm finally you know becoming one of the top agents in my area and stuff like that just because uh, a lot of work and i've been part-time for a while doing it too but it's just getting out there meeting people networking like you said going to events getting in front of as many people as you can with building to I'm trying to make a push into Naples. So I'm getting in front of every broker I possibly can for Na- in Naples and in- introducing them to our product too. It's just people got to put in the legwork. It's simple. Put in the legwork. Pay your dues. Yeah. Gotta pay your dues, man. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> thinks they have to. They think like the online courses, yeah, they might help you or Grant Cardone's real estate investing course or something for 997 once again might help you a little bit, give you some info. It's a good starting point but you're going to still have to meet people and have to talk to people like you too and and learn these formulas and everything of how to do it because there's so much to it too you're buying houses you're not buying you know uh (laughs) car i mean cars yeah that's a different thing too but these are houses these are structures these are a lot of money and you got to know what the hell you're doing so you know yeah so but that you, also shouldn't like hold people back no because I, I go to a lot of these rios and i see the same guys i've seen like ever since i started going to them you know a few yeah. years back and they're still like yeah i'm still you know trying to figure out this like llc or my business card or like something about insurance mm-hmm. i'm like dude just buy a house and rent it out <laughs> like make sure the numbers work and go for it if that's what you're going for buy yeah. a flip as long as the numbers work just go for it like don't sit there and like you need to have enough education, but at the same time, don't like overanalyze it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, I agree. Cause if you're going to overanalyze, I mean, the best thing is to just go out and do it. But obviously if you think the thing's going to be too much, it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> if you think it's yeah. overpriced, more than likely it's probably overpriced. It's like buying a car. You think you're paying too much for a car. You're going to know, you're going to have that gut feeling that you're getting ripped yeah. off. Hopefully, you know, but I, if you get around like the people that, like around my area, I always like in our in my meetup, I tell everyone like, Hey, you get a deal, even if you don't want a partner, if you just want to bounce it off me, like I'm not gonna steal your deal, right? Because yeah. I don't want my name to be tainted by like, Hey, that guy stole my deal, right? <laughs> like just bounce it off of me and you know, just give me a quick summary and I'll check it out and be like, Yeah, that looks like a good deal or no, that doesn't look like a deal I would do, but it still kind of works or absolutely don't do that deal. That's terrible. You know, so just bounce it off of people that have been doing it for a little bit of time. You know, that's the best way if you're like unsure about, Mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Well, that's, that's the thing. People got to not be afraid to ask people's opinions too. You know, that's, that's the thing. A lot of people got to put yourself out there. Mm Yeah. You got to put yourself out there. Um, All the uh, real estate investor meetings I go to, it's, there's a haves and wants where pretty much everyone stands up and like, Hey, I have this or I want this. So just go there and be like, Hey, I'm new to this. I want to learn if anyone needs help for with anything on a flip on a rental on anything, give me a call. I'll help for free. Mm -hmm. If I hear a dude like that, I'll call him up. All right. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what can you do? And then that's, that's how you learn. You don't even have to pay anyone. Right. No, uh, and that's I've told people that with building too. I mean, they, people have asked me. They're like, "Oh, I see your videos. I see what you're doing. You're doing awesome. This and that. You know, uh, do you have a play? Uh, how can I learn? You know, to do what you're doing. This and that. Can I get a job with you? First off, I already have somebody I'm training, so I'm not interested in really having somebody shadow me. But eventually, I probably would. But the approach that people should have is, all right, I'm going to work for you for, for, let me, let me just be there for free. I'll help you with anything I can. I just want to see how you do it and go about it. Even with realtors too. I've had people that are in other States that are like, Hey, I'm getting my real estate license. How'd you go about it? Best advice. Just go shadow somebody, call them, be like, Hey, uh, you're the top broker in my area. You You mind if I work for free for you for a week? what else are you doing? You know, it's like, you don't have a job as it is. So go shadow. What's another week going to hurt where you can, you can learn so much. And they, 
all the big time people say the same thing, you know, that are in real estate and so on. They say shadow somebody, they're going to let you work for free. If they don't want you to, they'll say, no, I'm not looking for something like that. Just ask around because there's enough people like yourself that are out there with experience that might be willing to have some help, you know, yeah. for free. And that's, that's like you said, like the approach is huge because everyone, I see everyone like on all the Facebook groups and in all the Rios, they're like, yeah, I'm looking for a mentor. Like no one's going to be like, oh, hey, let me, right? Hey, like, the only here. guy that's going to do that is going to be the guy that's trying to sell you some shit. Yeah. You know? Like you got to be, hey, how can I help you? That's that's how you got to approach it. That's mm-hmm. the best way to approach it. Every single guy I, I meet, right? Because you meet a lot of people at these Rios. I don't know if the dude's got like millions in real estate or not. I'm always like, hey, how can I help you? And mm-hmm. I always help everyone as much as I can, right? Um, just because it's good to help people and eventually you know karma will come back and it'll you know it that's how it goes you know uh, yeah i'm the same way i had somebody message me asking hey i'm getting into construction i'd love to learn blah 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 and i said yeah man i'm happy to help i don't really have any uh job openings or anything like that but if you have questions message me i may not yeah. answer right away but you know if when i can get to it i'll help you as much as i possibly can let me know you know it's yeah, just, for sure I never heard back from him because I think he wanted a job, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, if I can't have him shadow me, which I can't, cause I'm all over doing a bunch of different stuff right now, but mm-hmm. it's like, it's what you said, man, just reach out in the right way and then you'll figure stuff out. It's just a matter sure. of asking. If you don't ask, sure. you'll never learn. So, exactly. um, you've said, you've said, and we've obviously brushed on this, but let's go deeper in it. The unlimited potential of real estate. You've said this, that there's unlimited potential. That's why you wanted to get into it. So explain this a little bit more as far as what you're talking about. Um, so, I mean, that's like with everything is kind of like how I think about it. there's unlimited potential in anything. The only roadblocks or um, pretty much, yeah, roadblocks that we set for ourselves is the roadblocks that like we said, we set for ourselves, mm-hmm. right? So as soon as you can remove those roadblocks, like you can do anything, right? So up until a few years ago, I was like, yeah, I can only buy single family houses because I don't have enough capital to be able to buy these big buildings, right? And then like the past few years, we've been putting in bids on like multi million dollar apartments. And we've been doing it because I removed that, you know, mental barrier that I don't have that money. And even if you don't have that money, I have a chunk of it and I can raise the rest of the money, you know, for the down payments for these things. Um, and like unlimited potential in real estate, you can realistically buy as much as you want, right? Like let's say you want a thousand units. There's nothing holding you back from doing that. You know, it's just a kind of a, a game of, meeting the right people, putting, finding the right deals, raising the money and purchasing these assets and then, you know, managing and running them correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, I I think you can get as big as you want to in real estate. You know, it's just uh, wanting, it's just knowing what your goal is and taking the right steps to get there. Yeah. And it's like you just said, finding the right people back to what we were just talking about everybody's excuse says, all right, how am I going to do this? I can't do it because I can't get a loan. I can't do it because I, you know, I'm, I'm too busy doing this. Well, okay, let's take you, for example, you go to the meetings, you go to everything that you possibly can to run into the right people. You're getting in front of the right people too. You know, it's mm-hmm. putting yourself in a position to succeed. It's putting yourself in that position to you know, advance your life and so on, but also network correctly too. I mean, you know, with like my podcast, for example, uh, I'm meeting, I don't even know how many people I'm on episode 43 now or whatever. And, and that's, and I've had some individual ones, but that's 40 people right there that I've met that I can go back to and talk to and ask advice and deal with, and maybe I'll deal with in the future business wise. You know what yeah. I mean? When they want to build a f- house in Florida when they're getting close to retirement because we're in such a retirement area here. Um, but, you know, it's just it's it's constantly figuring out ways to put yourself in front of people. And there's no excuse for it either. Like you can figure out online now, like you said, Facebook, go to a group, type in. There's groups for everything now. Uh, you know, where I'm at, Naples, Florida uh, business 
get together or something like that. And all this stuff will come up or, you know, this networking, Naples, Florida networking, and this will all come up, you know, and then go to those events. Just talk. Yep. You know, if yeah. you like to talk, it's a lot easier. But if you don't like it to is. talk, you're going to have to learn to talk. <laughs> yep, for sure. <laughs> so so why why not, big question here, why not sell real estate? Why, why go the other direction and be the guy that, you know, is the producer of it? Or, you know, why not be a realtor? Let's put it that way. Okay. I mean, I have my, my license. You do. Okay. Um, but so the way I looked at it when I wanted to do this, I wanted to be in a position where I could do anything I want, whenever I want. Right. Um, I didn't want another job. Right. Yeah. And I feel like being a real estate agent, it's a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a very difficult job if you want to be good at it. You know, you got to put in a lot of time, talk to a lot of people, show a lot of houses, you know, just, it's a very difficult job. Same thing with wholesaling, right? You got to do a lot of marketing, talk to a lot of people, do all the other stuff. Um, you know, I do hard money loans and stuff. So it's the same thing with that. You always got to go to the meetings, find people to loan money to. Um, so I just, I didn't want another job, right? I wanted something that gave me the freedom to live life on my terms, right? Mm-hmm. Like if I want to go on vacation for a month and do whatever, I could do that. Not that I would, cause I like what I do, but you know, that's kind of where I was coming from is. I didn't want another job. I wanted something that gave me freedom. That's why rentals and, you know, cash flow producing properties was my main, you know, mm-hmm. um, point of interest. No, which makes sense. Cause when you're the real estate agent, you're dealing with the customer and, you know, buyers and sellers you're dealing with. So if I'm your real estate agent, I got to deal with selling your property. You're asking me, well, why the hell hasn't my property sold bill? And, uh, you know, when are you going to sell it? Cause I got to free up this cash to go do this. And you know, it's just your, your work, you're, you're an employee, you're, you're technically not an employee. You work for yourself as a real estate agent, but you are, I mean, you're helping the client, you're figuring out things that they should buy or things that you, you're figuring out ways that you need to sell stuff too. So you have a lot more freedom as the homeowner and you're basically mm-hmm. just dealing with the renters. That's it. So and then you probably have a company that does that, right? That kind yeah, of yeah. We have uh, I have all my own property management company. So there you go. I you manage know. the <laughs> property management company, and they manage all the rentals, and that's it's kind of like the perfect uh, yeah. ecosystem and, there. And you don't have to deal with the renters either. That is perfect, yep. perfect ecosystem for sure. <laughs> Um, let's, let's discuss, uh, how someone can get money to invest. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but I want to go into this more for the listener. So how can a person leverage someone else's money to purchase real estate? How can somebody do this? You know, you, we okay. talked about this earlier. Yeah. So I guess the first thing is kind of meeting the people, um, that have the money and kind of what I did, I, like you said, I'm, I'm a huge car guy, right? Um, there's this street, um, out by me, Woodward Avenue, super popular. There's always cars out there all the time. Um, and I, I love genuinely love cars. So I would always go to these meetings, go to these, like, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, the breakfast meetups. I can't even think of the name, but, um, Brunch. like usually on Saturday, Saturday or Sundays, cars and coffee, yeah, that's what it is. is. Uh-huh. <laughs> cars and coffee, all these different meets. And I would always like talk to people, you know, and I've made friends through just the car culture. Right. And not, not that I've ever like asked for money, but I always like told people like, Hey, this is what I do. I buy real estate. I flip real estate. I buy this, you know, whatever. And you know, those people by just hearing your stories, they'll be like, Hey, so I always hear you doing this, you know, I got some money. Would you, you know, be able to like invest it or help me buy a rental or help what it with whatever else. Right. And that's kind of how I got to be able to raise money from other people. And, uh, I guess, um, kind of going back to, I think what you were asking was, I mean, people can invest with just cash to have in a bank with a 401k. Um, there's a huge amount of different ways to, leverage people's money to uh invest it into real estate 
Yeah, and it's like you just said, though, too, it, it's getting what well, we've said multiple times on the show, just getting out there and meeting the people and stuff like that. There's so many avenues that you can get, but then you're telling them your story and what you, who you are. So you're making that connection off of that to where they trust you. You know, it's mm -hmm. gaining that trust because you're seeing them probably week to week at the, you know, the cars and coffee events and, and they learn about you and then they say, hey, man, well, okay, T.O., you're making some money. So how can you make me money? You know, I got yeah. this amount. Can I take this, give it, you know, and I trust you now. I'll take this amount, put it in this. What can be my return? Well, you doing it, being in the business, you can probably off the top of your head tell them the return that they're going to get. And well, I can make what on my money? Okay, yeah. well, that's better than my 401k or my IRA account, you know. Yeah. So the um, biggest thing, though, that I, I've like noticed, I hate when people try to sell me on stuff, right? Yeah, I, oh, I'm yeah. sure you probably feel the same way when mm -hmm. someone's like, hey, look, I bought this and I made this much and you can make I hate when people do yeah. that. And like whenever I tell people what I do, I always like like two, three months ago, we had a house and it we, <laughs> we it was like a farm. There were like 60 animals in there. <laughs> I shit you not. And like. I tell people about this place, right? Because it's cool. Like, holy crap, there were 60 animals. And I'm not like saying like there were 60 animals. There were legit 60 animals in there. Um, and it's like a thousand square foot house, like three bed with a basement. Um, but, you know, you kind of tell these people these stories and they're, you know, they get curious like, oh, so like how much you end up making on it? They're like, you know, how was, how much you buy it for and how much you put into it? And like, you know, you can show them like before and after pictures and, you know, all those different things. And, then you know people gen ask you without you having to like ask them right like i never like try to ask people for money or anything because that's not my intention i just tell people what i do because i like talking about what i do you know mm -hmm. and then people like automatically are like oh that's pretty cool like they either want to do it or they want to like you know invest with you maybe right mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. Well, most people that are successful too, or have the money too, they're, they're somehow know they've sold somebody or they know sales too. And me being in sales, you too. Well, no matter what job you're in, if you're successful, you got to know how to sell. But, but being in sales too, there's one thing I hate more than anything is just, is a pushy salesman coming up to me. So, you know, if I'm on a car dealership or for example, I was shopping for a new bedroom set the other day. Well, first store I went to, uh, this lady, I forget her name, but she was just on me, on me. And she, she smelled like an onion and, and <laughs> like she just ate a sandwich. And <laughs> I mean, nothing against her, man, but she just would not. Every, every corner I turn, every corner I turn in the store, there she was. She was standing there just looking at me. And I'm, she's like, what do you think? what do you think? And it's like, you know, in a furniture store, you're going around corners, you're, they got all these different bedroom displays. And I'm just like, pop around the corner and you just see her and she's there. Then you smell the onions from that sub, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, so then I went to the next place. The next lady I had was, she was just like, Hey, how are you, how are you doing today? Um, are you looking for anything specific? No, we're just looking. All right, great. Well, my name's this. Need any help? Happy to help you. Come get me. I'll be over here didn't follow me, didn't do anything, let me look, let me breathe. And to be honest, most people, it didn't smell like an onion. And then most people, you know, they, that's what they want though. You know, you go to a car dealership too. A lot of people, yeah, as a, as a salesperson, you know, you got managers that are like, you got to go out there and you got to sell that car, get on them right now. Do not let them leave. But most people don't want you on top of them. They kind of want to look around and when they're ready to, if they see something they like, they'll come and ask you, Hey, you got the key for this or you got this, mm -hmm. you know, I sold cars. Whenever I go to a car dealership, you know, I tell the manager, I say, and I know that I usually buy from where I sold, but I always tell them, I go, I don't want you to put a salesman on me. If you do put the quietest old guy that, you know, doesn't sell a lot and you just kind of there to be there, which he did. And this guy just leaves the keys in the car. They're pulled up. I go and test drive him without him in there. I don't get the whole see how the AC works. Look at the radio, <laughs> you know, and then I go, yep. I buy, if I like it, I'll buy it. That's the thing. You know, that's how I like sales, you know? Yeah, no, so. for sure. And I feel like that's how everyone feels too. No one likes being sold. Yeah. Yeah. And anything. Any and anything i mean and that's that's the thing so um as far as let's go into hard money loans you've you brought this up too not a lot of people understand what this is can you explain what an investor needs to look for 
when doing, you know, working with hard money loans? Let's start there. Okay. Or what so I do are. hard money loans myself, right? So what it is, it's pretty much when you want to buy a fix and flip or a rental and a bank won't finance it because maybe the house is in disrepair, whatever the case may be, right? Um, so you can pretty much get these hard money loans, what they're called. And they usually involve like higher interest rates, but you can get approved for them, um, okay. whereas a bank wouldn't approve you for it. Um, so I usually do them anywhere from like 75 to 80% leverage. So you still have to bring some money um, and it's the purchase price. And we also help with 75 to 80% of the rehab. And then at the end of it, you either refinance this out if you want to keep it as a rental or you sell it if you're like flipping it, right? Um, so what hard money lenders are really good for people that are getting started with maybe rentals or usually people use them more for flips, but sometimes people use them for rentals too. Um, because the hard money lender is going to look at how much you're buying the place for, what you're putting into it. They're going to look at the pictures, the comps, what the house is going to be worth. And they're going to be able to tell you like, Hey, this isn't a good deal. Like, by the time you put 50K into it, like you buy it for 50K, put 20 into it, and you pay us like the loan fees, you're not gonna make very much money. So it's not a mutually beneficial deal for you. So it's kind of like a second set of eyes on a deal you wanna do, right? Um, and then how I do um, hard money loans, from having a corporate career, I had a 401k, right? Company matched it. And I always like put in like 10, 15, I don't even remember how much I put in. But for however many years I worked, I saved up like a pretty decent chunk of money. So I kind of rolled that stuff over into a uh, pretty much a solo 401k. It's called the Qualified Retirement Plan, QRP. And through there, I can make these hard money loans. Gotcha. And then once I run out of money from there, Again, I use other people's money, so I leverage other people's money to, you know, they get a return. I pretty much just get a fee for putting everything together. And, uh, you know, that guy meant to, makes a return from for loaning me his money. I make a return for doing the loan. And obviously, the investor makes a return off of the flip. So it's oh. a win, win, win. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Definitely good. And then, as far as let's go, you know, so if somebody's going the loan route, do you recommend hard money or do you recommend a different type of loan? So if they had to get a loan, honestly, from what I know now, um, if I would have started using hard money, I would have been able to grow much faster <laughs> because I could have bought these places with hard money, um, refinanced out of them and went and did it again right got all my money back and went and did it again mm -hmm. right so i could have been instead of me having to sit there wait for a year save my money i could have bought a place fixed it up rented it refinanced it gotten all my money out let's say that took three months four months did it again right so in a year instead of buying one house i could buy three or four mm -hmm. or maybe more right so it just depends how quick you can like turn them and get your money out of them. Gotcha. Um, okay. So cool. I would definitely request, I would definitely say it to like grow and start initially, but for the long term, you definitely want like a conventional bank mortgage on it just because interest rates are much, much lower. Gotcha. What's the typical interest rate on a hard money? It depends. Um, so pretty much under 50 K, um, I'm around Detroit, Michigan. So a lot of people invest in Detroit. A lot of stuff in Detroit is under 50K. Uh, we pretty much do a 12% flat rate um, on the money for six months um, because usually that's how long it takes them to, you know, get their, fix it up or whatever they're doing with it. Yeah, okay. And then for anything over that, we usually do like three points on the front end and then 15% monthly interest. Um, but most people only stay in to them for two, three, four, five months max, and then refinances out or sell the property. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so how can someone, let's say, grow their real estate portfolio faster? You know, what strategies have you learned throughout your time doing it too? Because obviously you've probably 
been through this, dealt with the mistakes and the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. So what would you recommend somebody do to grow their real estate portfolio fast? To grow fast, um, let's say if you're just going for single family houses, mm-hmm. try to find um, homes that are owned by someone and you can get like um, a land contract on them or owner okay. financing, right? Um, because you might be able to come to the table with like 10% instead of like 25 right so that just gives you another 15 percent to go buy some more um or just using hard money to um grow that or just making a lot of connections with people that have money and maybe you got the time right you got the time they got the money so you can go find all the deals put the deals together they bring the money you brought your time you put the deals together and then you can kind of grow like that also um so I would say leverage, um, hard money, other people's money. Um, that's probably the best, best way to actually grow, grow quickly. Awesome. Once again, get to know as many people with money as you can. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Uh, what about, so, I mean, you've kind of invested in different types of property, single family, multifamily rentals, and uh, you name it, you've done. So what are, what are some different, obviously we brush on those and what do you, what, what do you prefer all the, out of all the different investments types of properties? Is there different, you know, and is this different, different parts of the country too? Um, so for me, I can speak with Michigan. I've only invested in Michigan kind of my local area. Okay. Um, I've done like Airbnbs, single families, um, now like some more bigger unit stuff. And I've, I'm at the point where it's a, it's a learning thing, right? So like when you start off, you want a single family and then you want to kind of move to like a duplex and then maybe like a fourplex and then maybe you get like an eight unit or 10 unit or whatever it is. Right. Um, so I think the best way to actually grow a portfolio and grow your wealth and everything else is just jumping in and going for big stuff. Right. Mm. Like find a guy that's buying a hundred units give them 50 grand 100 grand 25 grand whatever you have obviously if the deal checks out right not just some crazy joe schmo guru guy you know make sure to check out the deal and the guy and then just learn from him right he's going to send you monthly reports on how the place is running he's gonna you know you'll be able to see um what he does right and then you can in that time you just pretty much paid someone let's say 25k for an education that you're getting a return off of, you know, and then you can just go do it yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. learn what he does good and learn what he does bad. And then you can go do it yourself much, much better. Um, but bigger units, I think is the way, way to grow. And, um, my favorite investment now, right. All my Airbnbs right now are just getting killed because, Mm -hmm people do need a place to stay, but my cleaning staff, they're not essential. Right. So they technically can't work. Uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah <laughs> so if you had someone like going in before we had like the lockdown, it was good. But, um, so in times like this, Airbnbs are terrible in times like we had before, they were great. They offered great cash flow. Mostly if you have like a manager that manages them, um, it's pretty, very hands off for the most part. Um, but in times like these, it's, it's hard to make them work. Yeah. And see, to make them work. Yeah. <laughs> well, see times like these too, it, it's something that's never happened in, uh, you know, nobody ever saw this coming obviously, but it's a learning experience too, for a lot of people and especially the rental market. I mean, the Airbnbs, VRBOs, stuff like that, especially the weeklies and everything like here, we're so weekly. Uh, it's all weekly vacation rentals. And I mean, these people are making a killing on these weeklies. I mean, we were even building brand new construction houses just so these, they're spending almost a million dollars to build a house mm-hmm. just so they can rent it out weekly. Yeah. You know, You're just, telling me. It's just insane here what, you know, for the vacation rental values, what they were getting. And now all of a sudden it's nothing is, ha- you know, I yeah. don't, I don't know if they, they are. Sp- <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that's, if that's going to, I don't know if they're somehow sneaking the cleaning people in and they're still going. Cause I do, you know, you always know a tourist when you see them on a rental bike, 
you know, we're having kind of riding along the side <laughs> of the road here. And um, there's yep. still a few more of those left. So then they're obviously probably renting houses, but there's no beach or anything right now. But it's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's a different time, man. You got to, and obviously this is probably a learning experience for you and you're going to adjust to where it's like, all right, now multifamily makes sense. Annual rentals going to have the guaranteed income, which I'm sure a lot of renter, rental, vacation rental people here probably not going to learn. They're probably not going to adjust annual because they're making so much on vacation and this will blow over. But the amount of money right. they're probably losing right now is insane, especially if they have a mortgage on those properties too. And those new ones yeah. that they built too. <laughs> yep. No, that, that's what I tell people. I, I, the Airbnb thing hit hard a few years ago around here and I saw people buying stuff that they're like, Oh, well it doesn't make sense as a standard rental, but I can make it work as an Airbnb. Hmm. And I was like, dude, don't do that. That's like the most hmm. dangerous thing you can do is force a deal mostly like that because yeah, that property maybe makes you like $3,000 to maybe $2,000, $3,000 a month as a Airbnb. But if things go downhill and you can't, if you can, let's say it can only rent at, fifteen hundred dollars a month yearly um and you can't pay your mortgage and your taxes and insurance and actually just mm-hmm. you can't even pay that at, at that rate that's not a good investment and i saw a lot of people doing that stuff and i was like man i i don't know what these people are gonna do like i i never knew that something like this was gonna happen but they're hurting bad right now right because that's just coming out of their pocket and they have no escape route other than selling the property at a discount to get out of it you know so well especially here i mean if you're buying let's say like houses near the beach here where i'm at you're paying four hundred and fifty thousand minimum you were probably four hundred and fifteen thousand so on a mortgage with insurance flood insurance we got to have that here you're probably 18 i don't know you're probably two grand a month easy just for insurance a mortgage on top of utilities is the electric the water here is insane so if you're trying to keep the lawn nice and fresh we're paying Mm -hmm. my average water bill just so you know you'll probably like say you're not but 250 dollars a month is my that's crazy that's That's uh, yeah it's insane and the water is complete my house is on a well it's for free it's awesome (laughs) yeah see yeah naples is obviously less expensive i got friends that live in naples they're like yeah man my water bill is 50 bucks i'm like I'm, I, you know, I'm watering probably three days a week and I'm t- I, and I don't have kids or anything. It's just, it's insane. But yeah. um, I, I can only imagine like what, what, what's going on, the vacation rentals and everything. Like you said, the structure of that rental, when something like this happens, which nobody expected, you know, these people obviously have other homes too, probably. So it's just, I don't I don't know if this keeps dragging out the way it is and it doesn't clear up I, there's going to be a lot of and I hate to say it a lot of probably foreclosure and stuff like that yeah, happening because for sure you know and I talked I had my last podcast that I just launched I had a, a attorney he's actually a real estate attorney foreclosure and bankruptcy and so on and he was saying he goes I don't want to say my opinion he goes I'm just kind of expecting that you know I'm going to be a busy guy coming up let's say that yeah. so but it's not even just that I, I see a lot of people force deals you know a lot of people they just want they've been looking at a deal mm. for trying to find a deal for so long That's if it's thing, just a yeah. standard rental you know and they're like it just barely works if you like tweak these numbers a little bit and then yeah. tweak those other numbers it ends up working and it's like man you, you know you can't do that you always got to be super safe or just not have it crazy leverage right if you're only if you already have like 25 percent leverage into it 30 percent leverage most of the time you're good right you can usually weather some storms because you can drop rents or you can do whatever you need to do to fill that vacancy Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but when people like over leverage and do all those crazy things that that stuff scares me (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. And I agree with you because that's why I sent you, I think uh, it was a few months back, a duplex. Yeah. And then after what you said to me, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this uh, after doing the math in my head real quick because you gave me quick math. But, you know, I was, I've was i been looking for rentals, but I can only imagine like r- lately because I've seen it being in real estate, there's been a lot of people that I've overpaid for a lot of these houses because they're near the beach. You know, when other people got them priced right, you know, and if you're a cash buyer, that's a different, that's a whole different ball game. But if you're pulling out mortgages and stuff to get a rental and 
and pulling out money and then you're overpaying on top of it. I a hundred percent agree with you. You just set yourself a, not knowing this would come, but you obviously warn people too. It's not smart because you never know. I mean, you never know. It's just something like this can happen or we get hurricane or something like that. That stops people from coming. It's just, you know, a lot of people, they take the gamble and that's, you know, especially when the market's high, it's tough here. I know this market, it's tough here to buy a rental because when things are yeah. selling, they're selling. <laughs> so yeah, it's all different on your, on your end, mm. but yeah, it's same, same thing here, right? People try to force stuff and you just can't, you can't do it. Even if we were talking and this whole thing wasn't going on, like this whole Corona thing wasn't going on, I would still be saying the same thing. Like every single flip we buy, every single rental I buy, I make sure it's like super safe and I can weather it no matter what is going on. Like if that thing has to be vacant for a year, I'll, I'll be fine. Right. Yeah. So I always try to buy things looking at the absolute worst case scenario because you can work your ass off and have all your rentals. But one thing happens like the Corona and everything falls apart. You just lost all that hard work. Mm-hmm. Right. So I always mm-hmm. try to be super, super safe with everything. Well, right. that's, a, that's the way I am. And even with my customers too, when they're buying real estate, I'm like, you might want to think about this because this, you know, later on, is this really worth the money you're paying? You know, things depreciate over time, even a house does too, but you could also make a house appreciate by doing this, this, and this. Like with me, when I buy a house, I always want to buy right or I won't pull the trigger. You know, I've been trying to move to Naples lately and I found another house that was on the golf course. You know, I offered them what I thought it was what it was worth. Uh, the lady that owns it comes back, and it's she comes back at a number, and I counter back at the ultimate price that I'm willing to pay. That's it. Told her realtor that she almost did it. Then she comes back at the number she secondary off. You know, she already offered me. I said, all right, good luck with it. You ain't gonna sell it if you do. That person's nuts because I'm running numbers of if I fix this, do this, do this. How much can I pull out of this deal? No matter what the market's at, you know, you have to in your mind, put yourself in that. And then if, if I do buy it and I, and I do want to move on from it, can I rent it for more than what the mortgage actually is too on a yearly, you know, and yeah. be safe and on an annual rental too, which, cause here we're in a different market, obviously where annual rentals are dime a dozen. Everybody's doing vacation rentals here. So right. I know I can get more for an annual than I would, you know? So it's just always thinking ahead, which a lot of people, like you said, they think, get rich quick kind of mindset, which it's, you got to really think long-term, especially with what you're doing too, because you always got to have that out. For sure. So um, let's uh, going on this now though. So how do you get the best deal on an investment property? What are some things you would recommend? Um, Find the ugliest, stinkiest, most rundown house. That's really all it is. So like when I first started, I was, buying stuff off MLS and I could still do it and it could make sense. But let's say a month or two ago, I was still looking, you can't find anything on MLS, right? You got to find off market deals and a lot of off market deals. They're just houses that are, you know, unkept, outdated, ugly, smelly, stinky, hoarder houses, (laughs) firehouses, whatever it is. Right. Um, Because usually you can buy them at enough of a discount. Um, but then the, also the magic, right? You got to be able to fix these without having the contractor that's going to come into your house and charge you 30K for a bathroom or a, a kitchen, right? Um, so you got to know, have the knowledge on how I can like actually put in a kitchen in this place for like 10 grand and have it look really nice, right? Um, so that's the best way to get a good deal on something is find a house that needs work put work into it and be, you know, be smart, you know, update it depending on what all the houses around are updated as. And then, uh, you know, just rent it out. And then if you update it, if you, you know, let's say you find a house that's, you got to do a full rehab on it, kitchen, bath, furnace, AC, you know, all the stuff, then you pretty much have a solid rental for the next 10 to 15 years. You shouldn't have any issues with it. You know, you place the roof, windows, everything in it. It's pretty much a brand new house, so it should be a great rental with no issues. So how do you recommend somebody goes about finding the best value on a contractor, for example, that you know can 
fix these things too because there's a lot of contractors out there half of them probably do shit work and then half of them are really good but they may be more pricey so how do you kind of define who to go with instead of going with the cheap guy versus the expensive guy this is honestly like the the hardest thing of Mm -hmm. of it right um it pretty much just getting a bunch of different quotes i say people get three to five quotes you know meet the guys look at the work that they've done on previous houses you know you can usually get a gut feel for people um don't always go off a price you know you want you want the thing to hold together too um but then eventually after you work with these guys for years and years they're like hey you know to he's always buying houses or he's always getting this or that and he's always needs work so you know when i call they come you know so it's pretty much working with these guys and them knowing that you will give them work all the time that'll help them you know put you on the top of the priority list um, but a lot of times, like what we do now, we have, we hire guys that work only for us on our stuff because we have enough work. Um, so I, you know, these guys, we know, they know what they're doing. We trust them. So we can just tell them like, Hey, redo that or do this or do that. And it's done and it's done right. And it's at a fraction of a cost because we're paying them hourly. We're not paying them per project, you know? Yeah. And that's when you get to obviously that advanced level. You know, stepping yeah, stepping up on it too, obviously. But yeah, to start out too. I mean, it's like anything, do your research and then obviously bid out a, a few guys, three guys minimum, probably mm-hmm. too, uh, if you're doing this. And don't go with the cheaper guy because he's the cheapest. Make sure you just, I mean, you can find anything online. I always tell people yeah. that too. And there's a bad thing about somebody, especially in, a, in different cities and towns, you could find out too the last job he, or Duh. the last person he screwed or. The best thing that I've noticed is like investor Facebook pages, like in my area, if I need someone, I'll be on there like, Hey, who's doing foundations and I'll get a bunch of recommendations and then I'll search the guy's name and I'll see people post either like, Oh, this guy screwed me or, Oh, this guy did an awesome job for Mm -hmm. a great price. That's what I'm calling. Right. So Mm -hmm. investor Facebook pages, stuff like that is the best or just investor meetups, right? You can ask like, Hey, who, who, who do you know that can do this? And then mm-hmm. kind of bet them by other people that use that guy. Um, that's that's the best way I found. Um, yeah, simple just research. calling guys off of like Google, he'll you know come in with his you know forty fifty k simple you know kitchen remodel mm-hmm. where you, you can't. That's like your whole budget on a flip, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that's another thing too. Obviously, budget yourself correctly too. You got to go in with a number and don't try not to exceed it. I mean, everybody can wheel and deal, and especially in with subcontractors and that do smaller jobs and odds and ends or they want the work mm-hmm. learn to negotiate i mean that's the thing too you gotta you're in, you're in the business they're in the business and you know they want to make a little bit of money you you want to make money too so <laughs> simple, yeah plain and simple what what's this one what about some major challenges that you have faced so what are some crazy situations with properties because i watch you know your stuff on social media i see some funny things too so what are some crazy craziest situations you've dealt with have some fun Uh, with this one (laughs) well yeah i mean from anywhere from like crazy tenant things like i've had like kids kids stuck in the bathrooms for some crazy reason because they like swapped the bed the door handles out and it was like locked and the kid like locks himself in there so i've had like stuff like that happen luckily i haven't had like any fires um no no dead (laughs) cats or anything anywhere no dead cats i've I've walked um i don't know if you saw the one we were walking this like 40 unit apartment building um then needed a full rehab we came across a raccoon that was crazy (laughs) Uh, <laughs> um, the, just recently the house we just bought last week a squirrel somehow made its way into the house and uh, it like somehow it like shot up in the drywall I don't know how uh-huh. it just like made a hole and just like boom so we're like trying to get that thing out of there it's freaked out we're <laughs> freaking out you know like we just think this thing's gonna like spider monkey on our faces and like yeah, yeah. claw us so um, it, it's a lot of fun um, I think the cool like the probably the craziest thing was that house with 50 to 60 animals in it um like 
I'm not, it's, it was insane. So we walked in this place, we went to see it. Um, different animals had different bedrooms. So there were probably five to six dogs and cats in like five to six like dogs and then five to six cats. Some were in cages, some were free roaming, right? So first step was to get the dogs in the backyard. Next step, it gets better. Next step was for them to let the pigs out of the pig room. So there were three bedrooms, there was a pig room two piggies they're like they, i say piggies but they're they're big guys right there there's some big guys there um and then the other bedroom had like ducks and chickens like little baby ducklings they had like i don't know what else was in there and then the other room was like the reptile room so it had like lizards and snakes and like all this other crazy stuff so uh um, where the hell did these people sleep <laughs> in the basement oh Nice. So the yep. animal fed everything else, and then they had the basement. Yep. The animals nice lived, the, lived the high life. Yeah. So um, that was crazy. Like we had to feed the 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 pigs banana chips, you know. So it was like it was like musical chairs. Like we had to like walk in here. Like they moved the pigs out of the room. We looked at the pig room, and then the pigs went back into the room. And then we looked at the other rooms. It was just like musical like chairs with like <laughs> like musical animals, right? With us looking at the the different rooms and the different animals moving it was it was just insane they had like big like parakeets and birds and stuff like um they they did like an animal rescue um uh, okay so that's why how, how they like gathered it and uh their parents before the people we bought it off of they did the same thing so the neighbors were okay somehow i like i can't even imagine the noises coming from that house at night just hearing the pigs squeal you know it was insane but like you know you got parrots and, and, and dogs and just all these animal noises you know like yeah. noah's ark um so that that was uh that was a great i was hoping <laughs> that was that, yeah i'm hoping great. they i was ho i'm hoping they moved to ended up moving to a barn or something like that is that why they, they, were moved, the they house? moved down south somewhere oh, okay um and obviously we were able to buy it because how would someone like that ever be able to sell that house right like it was a pigsty you know, completely <laughs> honest and you know how how could they show the property to people like it would be impossible right like how would an agent walk through that house without them like always like moving the animals around right so we were able to purchase it we gave them as much time as they needed to you know move all the animals to the new state they used an rv so it was like we joked around it was like noah's ark <laughs> um yeah the move out there was interesting because the pigs they, they didn't want to leave um they had like a little ramp set up for them to like go into the back of the van and they wouldn't do it so they just kept like putting it off and putting it off until finally it was like all right we need to go so like the guy ended up having to like grab the pigs and they don't like being picked up yeah, right? yeah, yeah. so these things were just like screaming right <laughs> so i'm standing there my partner's standing there. The dude's wife's standing there. This dude's grabbing the pig. It's screaming. Lady with the dog is like sitting there on her phone, dying laughing. The people across the street are outside dying. It was like, it was, I wish I would have videotaped it because it was like a comedy show. I was like, I didn't even believe that this was happening, but it was like the greatest thing I had ever like witnessed. <laughs> I would have, yeah, I so, would have died laughing if I'd see that video. That's hilarious. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, it was a good time. That's awesome, man. <laughs> um, I've been asking this question too, uh, to everybody on this show. This is this, this one's uh, about you personally. So, what lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own business or lives to help us grow? I think just being genuine, being genuine, and just be who you are, right? Some people like you, some people won't. Um, the people that don't like you, whatever, the people that like you, you know, awesome. Don't, don't change to make other people like you. Um, I've dealt with that with like having a meetup, right? Mm -hmm. Because some people may not agree with the way you talk or may not agree with your views and everyone that I was kind of being mentored by was like, you need to make all these people happy. And I was like, I can't, right? Mm. This is who I am. This is me, genuinely me, who I am. I'm not going to change for anyone else. If those people don't like you, then, you know, they don't like you. Um, being genuine, being honest, you know, honest and respecting everyone, right? Even if they're a newbie, you know, everyone was a newbie at one time. So give them a chance, you know, let them 
they genuinely want to learn, right? They want to get to the next phase. So, you know, try to help everyone as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's what I try to do. You know, I always, in our meetup, we always give away like the calculators we use. We try to help people as much as we can, right? Because that's, that's the right thing to do, I think, you know? Yeah. And it's like you said, it all circles back anyway, man. It's good karma. And then, I mean, it's just all, everything that's how it all works. The better you are to people, the more you help people. And I, it's, you're spot on though. Not everybody's going to like you. That's, that's the way that's life, but you can't let that stop you from being who you are and who you want to be plain and exactly. simple. And a lot of people do because they're scared of what other people think. But once you get mm-hmm. past that and don't give a care what everybody thinks and you just, you know, focus on you and helping other people. It's a whole different ball game changes. Yep. Everything just doing the right thing. That's, yeah. that's the only way to do it. Do the right thing all the yeah. time, any situation. Yeah. Even if it's helping people move out of Noah's Ark house. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So most people ask, I, I, I ask this to everybody too. Most people ask about your past, which I already did, but let's talk about your future. What, whether it's business or life, where do you see Teal Bogdan in the future? Who will you be? All right. So my, my big goal is to have 10,000 units, apartment units, um, obviously a property management company to support that and uh, pretty much just keep doing what I enjoy to do, buy all the cars, enjoy all the cars, race the cars, you know, just have fun, enjoy life. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's simple and just, yeah. I, I, and you, once you get them 10,000 units, you'll be able to have uh, probably as many cars as you want. So yeah. <laughs> so last question i always ask everybody this is what this show is all about what exactly do people need to look for when investing in real estate just making sure that the numbers work making yeah. making sure that the numbers work i think that's the number one thing if you're buying rentals doing flips even buying a house for yourself right try not to be too emotional about it um try to make sure that it's actually a a good deal and you do love the house too you know everyone just kind of buys off emotion but make sure it's a good deal and that you'll be able to sell it for more money and then you know awesome yeah i mean and with the numbers thing too a little shout out to your facebook page people should go follow you because you do go over the numbers because it's not i mean it's math and you people do need to learn that and you and they can probably reach out to you too so that's another thing where can people find connect with you if they did have any questions yeah, absolutely. So I'm on, I always got to look up my Instagram because I never remember what it's actually, <laughs> what it is, but um, I'm on Facebook on T.O. Bogdan. Um, anyone can find me there on Instagram. I'm on real T.O. Bogdan. Anyone can reach out to me there and slide in my DMs. If they need help with anything, be more than happy to help them out. Um, running numbers, trying to figure out whatever they're trying to figure out. I can kind of share what I've done in, uh, kind of give them a helping hand yeah and recently you've been doing those videos too so i suggest everybody goes and watches those i watched majority of them myself and you can learn a ton i mean you got with five minute videos that somebody that has questions about like i said the math and everything too they definitely should just go right onto your facebook page i think it's awesome what you're doing especially since we you know with the video challenge that we're we both got going on but you're i I like the angle you're taking it because it is helping people too so and i think people are seeing that more and more so keep keep up the good work man appreciate it appreciate it yeah Yeah. i wanted to make something that was more than just hey this is me sitting here talking about nothing or regurgitating something that like Mm -hmm. i don't know tony robbins or andy or ed (laughs) says right i wanted to say do something that people actually found useful you know and also come from a place that it's something that i've learned doing it not just saying it because yeah you know so kind of share my my experience and what what i've learned no it's real life experience short journey yeah yeah i mean it's real life experience i mean short or not yeah you've been doing it for a, a, while, a little while but not as long as a lot of other people but you've also figured it out i mean you you've had your bumps and bruises and stuff like that but people can go learn from you you know a lot faster than learning from these gurus and stuff like that you know because your real life versus the other guys that already have made multi multi millions and selling their program online for I'm very against gurus. <laughs> yeah. Ninety seven dollars. I just think everyone can uh, 
everyone can kind of learn the stuff off of investor pages, mm-hmm. meetups, and just the internet, right? Google podcast books. Um, and I think once you get to that point, then you can find someone that's been doing it and hit them up and be like, Hey, I got this deal. Is it good? Is it not? Would you do it? Would you not? You know? So I just think you don't, people actually feel like try to buy, uh, they try to buy motivation. They try to buy success where you can't, you can't do that. Right. It's a, it's an equation of hard work, grit and doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. Highly agree, man. Highly agree. So everybody go check out Tio online on Facebook and Tio, thanks for coming on, man, taking your time. I really appreciate it a lot. It was a great episode, a lot of great information. I know I kind of went off the question, the, the questions I gave you there, you did real good. So I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate the opportunity. It was a great, great conversation. Awesome, man. And thanks guys for listening. I'll see you guys on the next one.